good. Hello, hand tool enthusiasts. <laughs> Welcome to the final day of hand work. How's that? All right, let's start over. Hello. How's everybody doing this morning? Welcome to the final day of Handworks 2023, the fourth. I know y'all been cooped up for six years waiting for this moment, but we got to say a few things before we hear from the godfather of dream again. On behalf of all the tool makers and vendors, we're incredibly grateful for y'all's attendance at this year's Handworks event. The organizers would like to extend a special thanks to the entire colony of Amal, the manager of the Fest Hall in Greenwood Barn, to the Handworks volunteers who helped set up and make sure the weekend ran smoothly, all the hardworking folks who worked behind the scenes for months to make this possible. It's a lot. And especially to the folks at the Amana Furniture and Clock Shop for their generous hospitality and assistance. These folks actually shut down their furniture operation to let us set up in their space. If you haven't already, you should go by and check out their beautiful showroom. Okay, let's circle back. Uh, two, 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 Especially uh, yeah. recognize the organizer, which is the Abraham family. Enthusiasm is just incredible, and this, like I said, you can only imagine how much work this takes to do. Thank you, guys. Okay, before we get down to it, our good friend Mike Simpson, the naked woodworker. Don't worry, rest him up. <laughs> anyway, we have a little tradition here of singing the national anthem of our great country, the United States of America. And it's our honor once again to have Mike sing for all of us. Mike. Well, I'd like to apologize in advance for what I'm about to do. <laughs> and I know I saw all you people standing in line, and I thought, if you volunteer to sing the National Anthem, you get a seat right up in front, and you don't have to stand in line. So keep that in mind if you ask to volunteer. <laughs> And I tell you, when Roy said he had 37 rejections, it reminded me of my girlfriend. <laughs> okay. <coughs> oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight For the ramparts we watched Were so gallantly streaming And the rocket's red glare The bombs bursting in air Gave proof through the night That our flag was still there Oh, say does that star-spangled Banner yet wave for oh, the land of the free and the home of the brave. Thank you, Mike. And now it's time to move on to the main event and introduce our special presenter. Some say he was raised only on a diet of high glue and shellac. <laughs> and that his sweat has more chitonins than diamonds. <laughs> Still, others say his DNA is rife with inlay and that his fingernails are secretly carbide tipped. <laughs> but we all know him as the Terminator of Teak. The Bubba Fett of Bubina, the Iron Giant of Giant Iron. I present the leader of our enlightened future world, none other than the Woodwright himself, Roy Underhill.
off the floor, haven't I? <laughs> How are we doing on the microphone? We're getting anything good? Can you hear all right? Oh, that's brilliant. That's brilliant. All right. Well, I'm, my name is Roy Underhill. I am not a craftsman, but I play one on TV. <laughs> so I looked around at all the wonderful work that you guys have done, uh, the artists in here, fine craftsmanship, and I've been to programs before where craftsmen show their work. You know, they've got slides of their, uh, the, the most favorite things they've made, uh, the things they're most proud of. I wanted to be a part of that uh, tradition, so I brought some slides here. This is uh, <laughs> with that Chippendale High boy. You would pass that around to me. <laughs> and uh, here we go. And this is, let's see, oh, that's a live edge. Oh, that's, that's a field of live edge tables. Uh, <laughs> and there's scrub rooms here. If you would just pass that around, please. Yeah. Uh, believe in me. Now you'll see why I have this up here in just a minute. Uh, because, uh, oh wait, let me ask you, how do you like the theme of this uh, our program here? This uh, in the future, in the past. Does that make sense? This is old beat stuff now. Remember when Luke got the lightsaber from Obi Wan Kenobi? Yeah. And what were the Imperial stormtroopers carrying? Blasters, bring. <laughs> What did what did what did the what did the Jedi carry? The lightsaber. The lightsaber. Ah. So from that, that's my one of my favorite comic books. You probably don't know this one. Uh, well, unless you're my age. <laughs> and went to summer camp. But I love the comic book called Atomic Knights. Did you ever hear that? No. All right. Atomic Knights was great in the fifties. Atomic Knights was uh, the world had been destroyed by atomic uh, warfare and the surface was all humanity had to be underground the surface was just radioactive uh, wasteland but a team of scientists discovered that ancient suits of armor provided protection mysteriously against the radiation and these scientists could venture forth on the surface and rebuild human life as it was before the <laughs> Armageddon I thought that was great. And this is an old story. This is a redemption by, as it says here, redemption by ancestral totem. It's like when I gave that axe to that guy, you know, who was everyone we were all so stunned, you know. It just gives you, putting that tool in your hand just brings you back. Now, what about the Woodwright shop? I did the uh, Woodwright shop. You all see, I guess that's why I'm here. <laughs> They told me, gosh, we've done well uh, with that show. It's on for 37 years, and, I, and somebody said, you know what, you've been on so long because it's cheaper to run your show than it is to run the test pattern. We got way back to the days of silent television, I remember. Those were the days. Uh, but nevertheless, the Woodwright shop, it was always, people say, oh, you're using all these old things. No, the whole concept was, from the get-go, was that the Woodwright shop was set in the future. When people have wise up. Right? Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. So people have wised up, they stopped burning up the planet, they stopped, you know, getting themselves <laughs> get a, a, out of shape. Uh, and that's, this is the world that we live in. So that's part of the optimism uh, of that time. I had, when I saw the theme that they were working on here, or, uh, let's see, Megan, are you here? Megan's here, all right. Megan, I only read poetry when you're in the room. <laughs> Being an Engl English professor here. This is Richard Brodigan. Richard Brodigan, all right. A uh, beatnik poet from the 60s uh, in Watermelon Sugar. You know, this is what you had. You had a copy of Trout Fishing in America on top of your whole Earth catalog back in the day. <laughs> this, is the, this is the stuff. And do uh, you know which one I'm going to read? Uh, uh, All Watched Over by Machines of Loving Grace for Richard Brodigan. I'll just read the last one, last verse. I like to think it has to be of a cybernetic ecology where we are free of our labors and joined back to nature, return to our mammal brothers and sisters, and all watched over by machines of loving grace. 
But that was that optimism of those days, the, the, the 60s thought the computer was going to free us up. So here I am. I'm back again after so long. Uh, and there are just not that many woodworking jokes, i got to say. They're not a rich field for humor besides the five Norwegian puns, which are too vulgar to uh, really bring up in this rich crowd here. So what was I going to do? I turned to, what would you do if you had to write something these days? What do you say? You said it? Yeah. Hey, 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 hi. So I turned to chat GPT to write a <laughs> Figuring that was right in keeping with uh, the theme here. So I've got it. Now, I had it right. I said to chat GPT, please write a, a humorous keynote speech for a gathering of hand tool woodworkers. And sorry if it didn't do it. <laughs> it did. And it wasn't good enough. <laughs> so I hit it again. It, 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 was, it was okay. You could have gotten away with it, you know. Uh, it, but it wasn't good enough to use, and it wasn't bad enough to be funny. <laughs> and I realized what was going on. It was the computer was trying to be me. You know, it was trying to do my work. It, it didn't. What its soul wasn't in it. And so I asked it. I, I thought, wait a minute. I said, Ch uh, computer, would you? Please, let me see if I can get it to do it here. Uh, write one from your own perspective. I want to hear what you would say, AI, if you were up here. And so it did. It wrote this. Now I'm going to need to hear this. I hope we can do it. I want to take the time. Uh, we'll keep the face on. We'll see. Maybe a little hard to hear. This is a new one here. All right. So, so again, this is chat GPT. This is the computer speaking to you, giving its keynote. Well, we all made that. 
tough to make. You don't want to say it because it was rough uh, on a lot of folks. But I got to say, I had the school. Maybe you didn't have to do this, but we'd have ten people in the same room uh, cutting dovetails, and you'd hear that. They, you'd hear <laughs> the sound would be like this. Damn. Man, trying to blow sawdust away with a mask on. You know? <laughs> All right? Yeah, you've been there. All right. Uh, I was thinking there's got to be a historical precedent for this. Uh, people had uh, to deal with this in, in 1918 with the, uh, uh, the flu, the Spanish flu. And indeed, there were. Uh, so I started gathering at the school uh, you know, where I've got to work and interact with people. Uh, tools that uh, would allow us to uh, maintain this safe distance. Uh, they did a lot of these in the uh, early and during the pandemic. Uh, I'm sorry of the uh, Spanish flu. This is a, uh, an unwieldy one. Plus, I got to help somebody boring a hole <laughs> across there. You see that? How that works. So I'm sure this was during the Spanish flu epidemic, and they used this to bore. Ah, there you go. Bore holes. Spooky action at a distance. There it is. <laughs> so that's, uh, that was good. Here's another one. I have, uh, gentlemen, can I get you to hold that up for me here? I need to hold that up high so everybody can see it. So hold it up to full extent. Yeah, this is interesting. I use this. Way up high. Can y'all see that? <laughs> this was an intro, it was a fluke. It was not designed uh, really for the Spanish flu epidemic. Uh, this was uh, it was designed in uh, Ontario and made in Ohio. Uh, and so you know what happened. Uh, the uh, uh, centimeters <laughs> and, and inches. Uh, yeah. so, but you know, to make a virtue out of it. I think they did very well here. <laughs> they put drawer, they built a bar in there. <laughs> so it's pretty cool. Alcohol powered woodworking uh, took a step forward there. <laughs> and how down there, oh, very nice. And there's a lovely lady in the front row who asked if she could. Here you go. And I passed that to you. There you are. Thank you. See? So you can work wood and make friends. That's good. Thank you. All right. Gentlemen. Ah, uh, so you know that problem. Now this one, you say this is not old. This is not from the Spanish flu epidemic. This one. Ah, <laughs> uh, this is uh, my dovetail saw, my little lesson. <laughs> Butt line special. This is the one stroke dovetail saw that allows you to keep a distance from the. Now, that was the original plan, that these were sharpened rip for dovetailing, so you could do there's one, there's two, you could cut these. But for my school, I could not afford three, you know, three saws for every student. So, uh, Lee Nielsen kindly made these for me with uh, it was sharpened rip, cross cut, progressive. <laughs> And free for all. So, <laughs> so I had these uh, uh, to work with. And it did very, very nicely. So this is the last. <laughs> uh, this is Lee. You know the new. You guys, you know about the. Uh, in, you've got. Imi well, I don't know. They're imitating the name anyway. Uh, crummy tools, but uh, you know the like Lee, Liam Neeson tools. <laughs> you know that one. Liam Neeson tools. Uh, they they come. They're 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 crappy tools. But they promised that if somebody borrows them and doesn't bring them back, they will track them down and kill them. <laughs> That's Liam Neeson. <laughs> well, I've been in trouble. What else has happened? Uh, politics. Has there been anything happened in politics? No. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my. Uh, I've been in trouble. Uh, I think you all know that what happened with me with uh, John Ashcroft way back in the day. Uh, remember that? Uh, they were looking for obscenity. This is after the, um, oh gosh, the wardrobe malfunction thing. They were looking for obscenity on television and in the media. Uh, this is John Ashcroft, the uh, Attorney General. This guy had the bathrobe put on Lady uh, of Justice. Oh, yeah. yeah, during the press conferences. And uh, so my show, you know, the Woodwright Shop, it's closed captioned because it's on PBS. And all closed caption shows are uh, 
you know, that text is uh, public domain. You pay, you know, you have everybody help pay for it. So it's out there, so they're able to search it. And my director and I got called in. Uh, what? Uh, we just got people from the FCC. They got to talk to you. What? Yeah, they got to talk to you. So what is it? And I come in, and they were kind of laughing when I got in. They said, I think we figured this out. They said, yeah, I think we got it. What is it? They said, well, we, we wanted to talk to you because the word screw showed up a whole lot <laughs> in your transcripts. So, all right, but that, that was in the day. Now it's gotten worse. Apparently, I, there's a very few, I'm so glad I was allowed into the state of Iowa. Uh, I appreciate it. Uh, there's a lot of states I cannot work in now. Uh, apparently, I've been teaching critical woodworking theory. <laughs> Now, any kind of critical theory, uh, whatever it's applied to, it just means that you're questioning, you know, why you think the way you think. You know, why, what are questioning, what are the forces that influence uh, you? That's, that's all that's about. So, you know, it's like I've been teaching, you know, why do you have to have a six, you know, one in six, uh, one in five, one in eight dovetail angle? Who says that? Who says you have to have a one in eight? That, why do you think that? Why? Okay, and you just measure why you think against rational consideration. Does it have to be one in? Who told you that? That's the dovetail industrial complex <laughs> telling you how to cut your dovetails. That's, that's just not right. And so that's critical woodworking theory. You're just questioning why you think uh, the way you think. And it, uh, this, this drives me, people think I'm nuts about this, but I, okay, what the heck, we're here together. Look at this, what is this? Tape. It's a roll of masking tape. And what color is it? It's tan. Who said that we needed to make masking tape turn blue? <laughs> or green? What the, I, did, did any of y'all vote on that? I said, oh, oh yeah, we're tired of this yellow. Yeah. Yeah, this was fine. <laughs> this was fine. Now we've got this blue tape everywhere. The place looked good. Oh, now I'm getting worked up. Hey, don't do that. You can't make crazy here. All right. Well, let me see. Did any of y'all uh, start on... I'm in worse trouble than that. I don't know why I'm even saying it. Uh, did any of y'all uh, start working with power tools and uh, then decide, you know, maybe I'll try these hand tools? Did any of y'all do that? Yeah. yeah. All right. So you're, you're transitioning. <laughs> <laughs> person's body. <laughs> and, you know, to me, I don't care what kind of tool you were born with. You know, it's just, or what you aspire to have. You know, that's between you and your shop teacher. Am I right? <laughs> All right. So, but still, I'm in trouble over that. <laughs> oh, man. All right. This is a great gig. I love it. Be in here with you guys. <laughs> That's the one I was worried. Uh, the, uh, the, tell me, uh, uh, what do you have for, uh, well, I, I know they're different all over the country. There's Menards and Lowe's and Home Depot. You've got probably got one of them. Where you got them all. got them all. Okay. Uh, I got a call for a gig uh, once, uh, this was a year or so ago. Uh, they were opening, uh, they, it was like uh, Friday. They needed me there Saturday morning at an opening of a Lowe's Home Improvement. And I think, what? Okay, no, no, okay, no, come and take, we need you. Can you sign? We, just are you available? Be there. Okay. I said, great, I can do that. So then I show up with, you know, my shaving horse and my suspenders and the hat, you know, the whole thing. And I got a harmonica rack and I'm ready to And so I'm there at the Lowe's and, the, you know, working the, oh, you know, thinking, and then people start showing up and there's all these fathers with uh, little boys. And they come up and they see me and they, the fathers are looking angry and the little boys are crying. <laughs> and I you know, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm, what, talk to the, you know, I'm trying to do say, hey, don't you want to try to shave them? I hate you, I hate you. I said, why on earth? And the guy came up and said, man, I wouldn't have your gig for nothing. He said, you know, the manager comes up, I wouldn't have this for nothing. He said, but, well, grave digger canceled. <laughs> <laughs> Now, y'all know who Grave Digger is? Okay, I can tell you, some of you might not know. You have monster trucks, and monster truck a big thing. Grave Digger is a monster truck out of North Carolina. Oh, yeah. And they run these huge boom, bam, boom. 
band, make noise, and all this horrible stuff. You know, but all the, so, so I'm saying all dang long. I hate you. Where's my finger? I want to see my finger, Daddy. I hate him. I so that parts of counties in North Carolina I cannot go back to. <laughs> they killed my finger. But you know, I think that's such an appropriate name for that thing—a monster truck. Blasting out those fumes, the noise pollute, the noise. How much more noise do we need? How much more, car, you know, petroleum burned up do we need for our entertainment? So I think Grave Digger is an appropriate name uh, for its activity there. Yeah. Oh, man. That, so that's the heat wave, man. We had it. That's the other thing that's happened is the climate. Uh, and it's not climate, it's just, you know, it's the greenhouse effect, let's say it, what it is, the greenhouse effect, coming home to roost. All that stuff up there. Now, I have a plan for this, as you know. You know I do. All right. So this is my three-part plan as I'm going to be uh, throwing my hat into the ring this year, what's left of it. Uh, the first health plan that I have, and this is all tied together with the environment, the health plan is the tool chest of Dorian Gray. <laughs> the older the tools get, the younger you get. Right? Okay, that's my, my first plan there. Second, how many of y'all have wood stacked in the basement, in the garage, in the attic? All right. You get credits for sequestering carbon. <laughs> right? The more you stack, the more carbon you're sequestering. The same people give you noise about that? You say, I'm sorry, dear, would you rather have it up in the atmosphere? No, <laughs> it's in the garage where we're sequestering it. <laughs> All right, so I've got, uh, I got, I don't want to about this, but I got to take my, at my school, the, um, we went to North Carolina, and in the summertime, the storms come up, so it's July, and I'm in the school there, in the school building, the, uh, Thunderstorm comes up, lightning everywhere, boom, boom, you know, all this stuff, and the power goes out all over town, middle of July. And I'm thinking, oh gosh, look at me. Uh -huh. yeah. So power's out, everybody stops, everything's down. I'm there working away, you know, I'm sawing, I'm planing. Oh, this is great, I can keep going. It took about 20 minutes without air conditioning. <laughs> well, I just, oh, how <laughs> So you can't be uh, you can't be too cocky about it. I went to I had the only woodworking school in America whose back door opened directly into a bar. Uh, so, uh, to testify. Uh, so that's great. Anyway, I want to say uh, thanks to you all uh, with the school. I'm going to say uh, this too because I think uh, our folks at Tools for Working Wood helped us out when we started. Uh, Tommy Nielsen, a big help to us. Folks at Highland uh, Woodworking all helped us get uh, started on that. But I've just named a few, but I want to say, every one of you tool makers, my students bring them, and I have seen just everything that everybody's making. And if you're a blogger, if you have a uh, YouTube channel or something on that, believe me, I have heard everything you say, even though I've never had listened directly. My <laughs> students, they say, because I'll hear that, I'll come up behind, they don't know I'm listening, say, well, you know, so-and-so on, uh, on YouTube, he said what you do is you take a uh, uh, scraper and you sharpen it and you put it in there and it comes out a lot easier than what he's showing. I've heard that on <laughs> <laughs> That tape, on, you know, the tape on the underside of the dovetail, cutting a little rabbit tree. Yeah, I've heard them all. <laughs> uh, and one thing I get, <laughs> let me see if I have it here. Uh, ah, here. The one cliche, you know, you hear all kinds of things, but people are talking, they've got to talk to you, you know, what the heck. Uh, and one of the things they'll say is, well, it'll come up every, every class, I feel like somebody will just say, well, you know, the difference between an amateur and a professional, a professional knows how to hide their mistakes. Oh. Yeah, now, if you're a professional, what do you do? Hey, I'm a pro. I know how to hide my mistakes now. <laughs> Been doing this 40 years, know how to hide my mistakes. If you're a pro, you're not making mistakes. You know? <laughs> so that's, that's not it. I mean, if you're a professional woodworker, your mistakes have gone way down, not your ability to hide them go up. <laughs> but 
If you are a woodworking teacher, your ability to cover up mistakes is paramount among, among your skills. Now, some of them are tough. I have, se I have seen things. I have seen things you humans cannot imagine. <laughs> I want to hold this up there until it starts to sink in what I'm uh, showing you here. So this is a pin board of a chest arrived at with great difficulty. Now, I don't know if you can see from where you are, what makes this pin board special? <laughs> can you tell what's going on with it? I know it's hard for you at the, at the back to see. Can you it's see what's inside outside corner. It's, uh, yeah, and why does it have uh, nine signatures on it? One person twice, and it says up there at the top, this board buys Bill and Roy a beer. <laughs> it's signed by nine people here. Can you tell? What is it? I think it's a Janus dovetail. This the is the are flipped over. This is the infinite dovetail. <laughs> the pins go one way in one direction and one in the other direction. So if you were to make a box, it would have to extend out through the universe, come around through the curvature of creation, and come back in order to join in here. And you find this stuff. Now, that's a failure of the teacher, isn't it? That should have been paying attention. But, you know, they're just kind of, oh, those look good. You're not looking at the other one. Are they? You just assume they're aligned. And I came, I came back. One of the fellows who did this, young guy did this, and he said, I, he said, well, why can't you just saw it down the middle and turn them over? <laughs> <laughs> and I did. I just saw it down the middle, straight down, dialed it, and said, there you go. There's one of those. Out. But it's much faster just to remake them. Uh, okay, so the dovetails go in both ways. Well, listen, I spent enough time of yours. I know you want to get out and do some, uh, finish uh, this one thing. Uh, at the school, we had uh, just an incident that happened. I'll we'll, we'll relate to you and then we'll head out. Uh, as I say, it opens into a bar. Uh, it's great. Uh, and so we were after class. Uh, Going to the bar, and everybody was down there ordering, you know, getting a beer, you know, and sitting down. It was great. And sitting down outside under the shade, having a beer. And, uh, one of the young apprentices, uh, one of the younger fellows there, he's, he had, no, we all had beer. He got himself a, uh, he ordered a McCallum 12 year old. <laughs> now, what's a McCallum? Neat. McCallum 12 year old, that, what is that? That's a very good scotch, is it not? Yes. Very high end scotch. Young guy there, he's got a glass, he's got it neat, and he's, he comes and he's looking at that beautiful amber scotch there, and we're all drinking our beers, you know, looking over him. And I'm looking at that scotch and his and admiration of the amber color as he's think, contemplating drinking it. And for some reason, I had in my lap, I don't know why, but I had a, a bag of Oreos. <laughs> <laughs> and I looked at that scotch. And his anticipation of joy and, and pleasure, and, and I, I looked at the Oreos. <laughs> I looked at the scotch, I looked at the Oreos, and suddenly inspiration. I say, hey, everybody, you know what's really good? And I plopped the Oreos on the table, took out an Oreo, and dipped it into his glass of scotch. <laughs> and I said, oh, mm, dang, if it wasn't good. <laughs> I said, wow, everybody try this. <laughs> The Oreos around the table, and everybody's dipping into his scotch. Now, this, this was wonderful. The scotch, the Oreo, it was just wonderful. But what was beautiful, what was truly a just magnificent, transcendent thing, was the look of dismay <laughs> on the young man's face who had ordered this. And it, it, it was absolutely beautiful. I looked up, and, oh my God, this is the, this is the, 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 uh, the, uh, the uh, Euclidean essence of dismay. It's beautiful. And it was right there. Now, think about it now. If he had, if I, you know, what if, he had, what if I hadn't been there? What if I had been sitting next to him? He would have said, oh, well, I had a nice McCallan 12-year-old. But no, what did he have when he left? He had a story about this moron sitting next to him. <laughs> With a bag of Oreos and pass them around to everybody. And why did he have this treasure? Because he was sitting next to a craftsman. 
at least somebody who played on, on TV. Thank you all very much. Thank you. would not be the same without you. Okay. I only have one announcement before everybody heads out and enjoys the rest of the show. If you didn't see the list of door prize winners, it's to your right at the end of the barn. Find your name on there, claim your door prize at the booth where your prize lives. That's it. Enjoy. Thank you again, Roy. Roy Underhill.